Whoop, da -da. So what I wanted, jeez. So I want to do a video about what's in my pack. Um, I want to have it. Jeez, these briars are everywhere. Wanted to make a video about what's in my pack. But I want to aim it towards beginners and people who are maybe just completely unfamiliar with backpacking. So the way I decided to do this is I'm going to unload my pack for you, show you what's in there. And then I want to show you different types of gear that's out there. I have a lot of different types of gear. I've been backpacking for a long time and have, over time my gear system has evolved. Um, but really? I started off with some stuff like my old Slumberjack sleeping bag, which back in the day was really, really light, but by today's standards, it's not. <laughs> it's actually quite heavy. Um, it weighed in, oh God, I think that thing weighed about three pounds, but whereas now I have a three season quilt that weighs about 19 ounces and a zero degree quilt that weighs about 23 ounces. Now I'll get more into those later. Now as my gears evolved, it's got more expensive. And I'm not at all saying that you guys need to buy this kind of gear. That Please don't think that's what I'm saying because some people are bigger and they can carry heavier loads so they can get away with a little bit heavier gear that's also more durable because as gear gets lighter, it also gets more delicate and you have to be easy with it. Um, if you want something you can just throw around and not have to worry about it, and you can carry the heavier loads, by all means, there's nothing at all wrong with that. But for me, I don't know if you've been able to tell from my videos, but I'm quite tiny. I weigh, I am five foot tall and weigh only <clears throat> pounds. So it's a necessity for me to have a lighter pack. That way I can move faster and be more nimble and be safer on the trail. And also it just makes backpacking more fun and when you're comfortable. As I unload my pack, you're gonna notice that I pack everything horizontally inside my pack. So when you're packing your pack, the key is to have the heaviest items closest to your spine. So what people tend to do is they're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna take my heaviest item, which for most people it's their tent. And I'm going to take this item and I'm going to put it straight down into the back of my pack. And then I'm going to put it, you know, very close to my spine. So now you've got this one heavy item lengthwise and then you're playing this little balancing game trying to make your pack balance. So what I've figured out works good for me, I'll, make, I'll pack everything horizontally. So what that does is it helps everything stay very even. The things I use only at camp at the very bottom and the things I might need on the trail are at the very top. And those are going to be like a first aid kit and food and stuff like that. But I tend to try and keep that stuff on my outside mesh pocket. Ooh, maybe I'll do another video sometime about how I organize my pack. So this next part, my backpacking buddy Mags helped me film. And it's just me unloading my pack. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. I've actually filmed all this before. I filmed it at home in my backyard and I was sitting under my patio and the sun came out and kept going, coming out and going behind clouds and coming out and going behind clouds. So my camera kept doing this like light thing. I'm gonna go ahead and use the narration from that. So I'm gonna bring up me in my backyard. All right, so my pack is a roll top bag and this helps with really compressing everything down inside. First thing on top is my jacket. This is a Ghost Whisperer from Mountain Hardware. And then next thing up is my food bag. Okay, and then my repair and survival kit. Oh, there's my poop kit. Yeah. Um, oh, my electronics bag, I keep in one thing so that I could throw it all in my sleeping bag on a cold night because cold will discharge electronics. Um, let's, ooh, here's my tent. I love this thing. We'll talk more about my tent later, but it's really light and it's a two person tent, so it's very roomy. Okay, there's my sleeping mattress and another sweater, um, my Instaflator. 
Oh, there's my Tyvek ground sheet. It's really lightweight. You'll notice I take all these other loose things and I use them to fill in other little voids that are within my pack. Oh, here we come. Here's my sleeping bag. Ah, love this thing. We'll talk more about that one later too. This is my Cuban fiber bag that has everything that belongs in my tent. It compresses down very small, but right now it just looks big because it's uncompressed. All right, so that's everything in the main compartment. Oh, here's Bubbles. She's my spirit animal. And I also keep my first aid kit in the back of her head. So dual use item, win-win. Okay, this is my rain gear. I no longer carry a whole rain suit. I just carry an umbrella and a rain kilt. Okay, snacks. A little ditty bag full of random stuff. Oh, and here's, let's dump my toothbrush on the ground. Oh, and then put it in your mouth. That's smart. Okay, but that's all in a op sack bag. Uh, so you got air horn, we got mace, whistle, and then, oh, these are my sun gloves. Let's not watch me put those on. Okay, oh, and here's my butt pad. Uh, okay, I'm gonna come sit down. All right. Thanks, Mags. All right, then I got my in reach that I keep on my shoulder. And then, okay, now we're getting into my hip belt pocket here. Ah, I got my inhaler. Got my headlamp and I put some shock cord on it to make it lighter. We got sunscreen, bug stuff, hike goo, chapstick. Uh, okay, now the other hip belt pocket. This is my iPod. Gotta have that for long, mild days. Um, oh, my dad's old compass and then also my little tiny pocket knife. Got my stove. We'll talk more about that one later. Oh, and my poop trowel. That's not poop on it, that's mud, people. Well, that's everything that's in my pack. So now I want to kind of get into the different types of stuff that's out there. And we're going to start off with the big three. The big three are going to be your heaviest items. They're your pack, your tent, and your sleep system. REA has a lot of packs available, but most of them are the traditional type. And while very durable, they tend to be heavier than an ultralight. I started off with a Gregory Diva 60 liter pack from REI that weighs almost five pounds. The pack I'm currently using is from a smaller company called Z-Packs, weighing in at a measly 21 ounces. The two most common types of tents are freestanding and tension style tents, which use your trekking poles to hold them up. The advantage of the trekking pole tent is that you're only carrying a tent and not the poles as well. The drawback is that these are single walls, so condensation can be an issue inside the tent. They also require a bit of practice to put up. When I'm by myself, I carry a Z-Pax Duplex, which is also a roomy two-person trail palace, but weighs only 23 ounces with the stakes. My stakes of choice being the MSR Mini Groundhogs. The reason my hubby and I don't use the Duplex together is because of the condensation issues that are inherent with a single wall tent. He just breathes too much. I have both types of tents. The freestanding double wall comes along when my husband is with me, and we split the weight of the tent leaving us each carrying about 15 to 16 ounces. That one is a two-person Big Agnes Copper Spur. Freestanding tents are comprised of a mesh body and a rainfly. The purpose of this design is so condensation collects on the outer part of the tent and not inside with you. The drawback is that they are heavier due to carrying the rainfly body and poles. Both style of tents have a vestibule or two where you can store your shoes and other dirty items that you wouldn't want inside a tent, but can keep them out of the elements. Your sleep system is made of a mattress of some sort to insulate you from the ground beneath you and a sleeping bag to insulate you from the air around you. Some people use closed cell foam pads, but the majority of the backpacking community uses inflatable mattresses. They're fairly light, packed down small, and are very comfortable. And if you get one with a high R value, they will provide a lot of insulation from the cold ground to keep you warm at night. Sleeping bags come in two different types of fill, synthetic and down. Synthetic bags will still insulate when wet, but are heavier and bulkier, whereas down compresses much smaller and is lighter, but loses all insulating properties when wet. When down gets wet, it kind of resembles a wet Kleenex. A backpacking type of sleeping bag is usually a mummy style with a zipper up the side and a hood to cover over your noggin. I use an ultralight down quilt. This is not the same as the kind of quilt that's on your bed at home. It looks like a blanket but is made from a sleeping bag material. It has a zipper and drawstring at the very bottom to form a foot box and fastens to your pad with a strap or two to hold everything in the correct place. 
The reason a quilt is lighter is because it doesn't have all that extra material at the back. Your back is insulated by your pad. It's generally recommended that a 20 degree bagger quilt is a good all around three season choice. With a good liner, you can bump this temperature a little more. I have two sleep systems. One is for three season and the other is for winter. My three season setup is a Thermarest NeoAir X Lite Women's with a 20 degree quilt from Enlightened Equipment. My winter setup is a Thermarest NeoAir X Therm with a UGQ zero degree quilt and that quilt has a sewn together foot box. It doesn't have the whole zipper and drawstring deal. So it's going to help keep some extra warmth at my feet. No little drafts coming through that hole. Then there's also the hammock systems, which consist of a hammock. Sometimes they have a bug net on them and a tarp. Your regular quilt is used on top of you and an under quilt is used, guess where, under you. Hammock setups are heavier and bulkier and take up a bit of skill to set up, but have the advantage of being set up anywhere two trees are available and no flat ground is required. They're also said to be more comfortable than sleeping on the ground. All right, here's a big one I keep getting asked about a lot. What do we eat? It's always about the food. During the day, I stick to snacks and don't really worry about, about having a dedicated lunch type meal. For dinner, I'm a big fan of dehydrated meals like those from Backpacker's Pantry and Mountain House. One of my favorites is the rice aroni four cheese microwave bowls. I repackage all my food into smaller vacuum sealer bags to eliminate packing out a bunch of trash. The key is, though, not to vacuum the bags, just seal. This keeps them flexible and actually saves space by not having a bunch of hard lumps trying to fit awkwardly together in your food bag. You can pour boiling water directly into these and let them sit and then also eat out of them. How do I boil my water? I absolutely love my alcohol stove. I just bring enough for fuel for my trip, pour it into my spill-proof cogen stove, and light it. I pair this with a caldera cone, which is also a windscreen, and it's my pot stand as well. Once the water is boiled, I just blow out the flame, add a little more fuel for my morning coffee, and then put the cap on. Now all I have to do in the morning is light it. Everything rolls up and stows away in a cut-down smart water bottle that I stash in my pack's side pocket. Easy peasy. The advantages to a canister stove is that they boil water faster, they aren't as susceptible to the wind, and can be turned down to simmer food. But the fuel cans are heavy, hard round objects that are hard to pack and you can't see how much fuel you have left. Oh, and they're finicky in freezing temps and they're lame. We store our food away from our tents and either hang it from a tree, bear bag style, or we use some kind of bear resistant device like a bear can or an ursac. I use either a Cuban fiber hang bag or an ursac depending on the trip. We talk a lot about protecting our food from bears, but it's also important to keep in mind rodents and those damned raccoons. All right, the time has come. On to my favorite subject, pooping. It's pretty simple. Dig a hole at least six inches deep and at least 200 feet away from any water source. Commence with your best squat and poop away. We mostly pack out our used toilet paper and wipes in those dog poop pickup bags, but we always carry the biodegradable toilet paper because sometimes that first wipe is a little soft servy and I just bury that particular one with my poo. So we cover the stinky hole with dirt, plop a rock on top, and walk off with a new lighter U. For us girls, the pee rag is a lifesaver. You hang this on the outside of your pack, that way the sun will dry it and the UV rays will, it's said, sanitize it. I'm not sure about that, but I've used the pee rag for years and I've never had an issue with it stinking. Becca brought up a good idea. She said it would be neat to hear what my luxury items are and also the things that I used to carry but later found out I didn't need. The first one is my pillow topper. This one was inspired by my friend Christina LaRue who brings a chopped down bed pillow cut in half. I made mine a little thinner with a cord that fastens it to the top of my Sea to Summit Eros ultralight inflatable pillow. I also use a cut off t-shirt torso as a sleeve that goes around my pad to keep the pillow from running off in the middle of the night. I also have a Helinox Chair Zero. 
that weighs one pound and is so nice to be able to sit and lean back. Wine in a bag for some trips. And then also, bubbles. The things I realized that I don't need are number one, a giant first aid kit. I now only carry a couple gauze pads, a few band-aids, some steri strips with tincture of benzoate for wound closure, some rolled gauze, a tick key, and medical tape. Another must is Luco tape. I've taken to putting a couple strips on some of that wax paper, the stickers come on, and it comes off easily. Some people also roll theirs around straws. I've found that medications are what's most useful on the trail, and I carry quite a bit of these. Ooh, and the bug bite thing. This is an awesome little doohickey that I got off Amazon for, I think it was like $6. It works for mosquito bites, spider bites, and even wasp stings on your hiking buddy's butt. Next is a giant trowel. This thing is heavy. Now I have this tiny, lightweight deuce of spades that weighs hardly anything. Water filtering bags, gravity systems, etc. I've ditched all that and now have a dedicated smart water bottle for dirty water and just screw my filter directly to that. Also on water, I no longer carry a camelback. I made a little Cuban fiber bottle holder on my shoulder strap and I also carry smart water bottles in my pack side pockets. I really like the smart water bottles because of the long thin shape it means they don't take up a whole lot of space in my uh, side pockets. A dedicated camera. I no longer carry one of these because my new phone takes great photos and it's all I need. All right, so what do you think? I hope that really helped you guys and help people understand what backpacking is and maybe people who are out there are watching this video because they know me and now they're seeing this and saying, wow, that looks fun. She's not out there trying to survive in the wilderness. She's out there having fun, living in luxury, drinking wine and just enjoying herself. Anyway, um, if you like what I'm doing here with making videos that have a little more information, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and definitely hit that like button. So that way I can know what people are enjoying more and I can do more of that or find out if people just want to watch me walk down the trail. I don't know. It's kind of boring, I would think, to watch. I want to try and put content out there that's going to be helpful and useful to people, not just watching my ugly mug walk down a trail. Anyway, the sun's about going down. They got the fire going. It's dinner time. Bye.